we will rise up and walk. I'm Dr. Marie Herring, the senior pastor of the Day Spring Missionary Baptist Church, where there is life at the spring, and where everybody is somebody, and Christ is truly all. We invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for our Bible studies. We also encourage you to give to this ministry if the Lord lays it on your heart. And you can give remotely by Givelify, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. And just give us an encouraging word as this uh, ser service proceeds. So we thank you for joining us this morning, and we hope that you enjoy and that there be a, a word that can change your life. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have all power in your hand. You're too wise to make a mistake. And you're too just to do wrong. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you not just for those members of Day Spring Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you, Heavenly Father, not for those who live here in Elijah Way County. We thank you, Heavenly Father, not for those who live just here in Gainesville. We thank you, Heavenly Father, not for those just in the United States. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing the entire world. If you bless us, we are blessed. If you save us, we are saved. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless those out there in Facebook land. That there might be a word this morning that will carry them through the week. We continue to ask you in all of these blessings. We do ask in your name, Heavenly Father. Amen.
And we serve a God of another chance. Aren't you glad about it? It embraces the concept that man is a fallen, sinful creature, eternally doomed without the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, I know that topic kind of got next to you because uh, we're calling somebody unworthy. Mm -hmm. But there is a point behind this because as you remember, all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. So we are all unworthy. Yeah. But we're talking about redeeming them, saving them, uh, rescuing them, forgiving them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and if we are to live full and a full and productive life in Christ, we have to accept the responsibility of forgiving those who are guilty and rescuing those whose past conduct is reprehensible. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. We as disciples of Christ must not stop at helping only good and deserving people. Mm. So we think, hallelujah, Amen. that we meet in this world today. Hallelujah. Uh, what the world sees as good and deserving, God does not necessarily see it that way. Amen. Our theme here at Day Spring uh, for 2020 is live full in 2020. Mm -hmm. In family, finance, fitness, and faith. We adopted the international theme of full gospel, not knowing that we would immediately be confronted in all of these areas. Lord have mercy. As a result of the pandemic, families have been forced to interact with one another, mm -hmm. being good or bad. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Also, being good stewards over our finances is at the forefront of our decision making. Amen. You know, how much money are we saving when we go 30 days? Without going to the hairdresser, Lord have mercy. Without going to the barber shop. Getting our nails done, hallelujah. Yes. Getting our toes done, yes. not, not driving and burning the, all the gas out of our car. That's right. Y'all hear me? That's I mean, right. this thing is right at the forefront. And, and who would have thought that in January, Jesus. our theme would address what's going on today? We are struggling with staying fit, mm. Lord Jesus, mm. because we're, we're staying home and self-quarantining, mm -hmm. not going to the gym, That's amen, <laughs> but uh, what, what little uh, uh, athletics that we do, we do it around the yard and around the house, amen, or we look at TV and we try to do the Zoom, yeah. uh, uh, Zumba from TV. But also in our faith is being challenged and that we're forced to lean and depend on the Lord. Yes. Matter of fact, the entire world is forced to lean and depend on Jesus. That's right. So guys, if we are to possess the spirit of Christ, it means cultivating and perfecting the grace of forgiveness. Say forgiveness. Even when our enemies mm. demonstrate no remorse or sorrow. Jesus. Now that's hard to do. Yes. Remember, Jesus innocently, I said innocently, uh -huh. died for us on Calvary. Yes, he did. First Peter 3 and 18 says, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, yes. the just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Therefore, how can we experience the great mercy of God to us through Christ Jesus and yet be unforgiving of the sinful conduct of those who are on the road, the same road that we used to be on? Y'all hear me? Yes. Uh, no matter how respectable that we might have been or 
assumed to be, we are still clothed in the filthy rags yes. of sin and unrighteousness. Yes. And before we can hear what God is saying to us yes. in this particular message, we got to fully accept the fact that we are the unworthy. Y'all hear me? Yes. I know you thought it was somebody else, but it's us. It's you. It's me. It's amen. amen. We are the unworthy who was redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so, so the setting of our text is the city of Jerusalem on one of its feast days. Uh, Jesus comes into town on this holiday to participate in the celebration. And before encountering those who were celebrating in hooping it up and partying. Jesus walks among the sick and the disposed. Mm. During a time of feasting, a time of rejoicing, yes. our Jesus Christ considered those in pain and affliction. Yes. So the Bible says in verse number two, now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate of the pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Y'all, Bethesda means house of mercy. It was a house of mercy and compassion for the poor. Bethesda is a paradigm for what the church ought to be today. Yes, yes. If the church is anything, ladies and gentlemen, it ought to be a house of mercy. Yes. There are five porches built where the sick and the infirm could lay their pallets and wait for their expected deliverance. Yes. Every now and then, the waters were troubled by the stirring of an angel's wing. Amen. And the first to enter into the waters mm. was made whole. Y'all hear me? Yes. yes. My God. Bethesda, Bethesda is a picture, is a picture of all people in the world who live in desperate need. Mm. Uh, many are victims of their own sinful disobedience. Yes, yes. There were blind people there that could not see. Mm. There were the lame that could not walk. Come on. There was the withered that were deformed and paralyzed. Y'all with me? Yes. Bethesda, Bethesda is a picture of desperate humanity yes. grasping for a cure hallelujah, mm. of its ill. I want you to think about what's going on now, guys. Humanity is desperately ill with different kinds of cancers, different kinds of afflictions and pandemics. But the prognosis is poor. Jesus. James 1 and 15 talks about the progression. It says, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Sin's constant desire is to deceive and then to destroy by whatever means necessary. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. And y'all, I could imagine that the people were lying at the pool, yes. waiting for the moving of the war. Come on now. Hoping that something miraculously, yeah. miraculously and yeah. divine yeah. would happen. Yeah. I could imagine people were pushing and shoving Jesus. and running over folk, Jesus. trying to get to the pool first. Come on now. Saying it's my time. My time. No, no, get out of the way. It's my time That's right. to be here. That's what humanity does. And from this pandemonium, I can imagine that these people were
are going through a season of frustration. Wow. Yes. Especially this certain man that had been there 38 long years wow. to try and get a heal. Wow. I want you to see the picture this morning. Come on, Pastor. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody listening, knowing that you're being frustrated mm -hmm. on your job, mm -hmm. not knowing if you're going to have a job when you get back after this pandemic. Well, Some people are frustrated. You're frustrated in your home mm -hmm. with this self-quarantine, mm -hmm. with disobedient children okay. <laughs> that are now forced to be home with you. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. With financial and food situations. Come on. The food lines are hundreds and hundreds of cars. That's right. Some people are frustrated with sickness and addictions mm -hmm. to deal with. Some people are frustrated with mental health issues That's right. of family members. And sometimes yourself. Mm. And you're trying to praise the Lord. That's right. With all these burdens weighing you down, you're going through a season of frustration. Mm. But I got some good news for you today. All right. Whenever anybody goes through a season, mm. that lets you know that it won't last always. That's right. We've been made endure for a night. Come on, Pastor. But joy comes in the morning. I want to suggest to you today that Jesus did not go by the pool by accident. It was an act of divine providence. He went there on purpose because he knew that somebody in the pool, or at the pool rather, needed a miracle. Don't think the Lord has forgotten you, they spring. Don't think the Lord has forgotten what you've already prayed about. Yes. Hang on in there. Jesus. Because the Savior knows who you are. Yeah. And the Savior knows where you are. Yeah. He's got your address. Yeah. He's on his way to your house. Yeah. He's going there on purpose. Yeah. He's picking you out on purpose. This world is pronounced guilty and unworthy by the word of God. Yet there is hope. God is yet willing to redeem an unworthy world who has trampled the gospel under their feet and abandoned the ways of righteousness. If my people who are called by my name yes. shall humble themselves and pray. Yes. Seek my face yes. and turn from their wicked ways. Yes. Then I will hear from heaven yes. and forgive their sins yes. and heal their land. Yes. Heal the land, Jesus. Heal the land. Yes, Jesus did not heal everybody right. at the pool. But he singled out one man, a victim of rheumatism or a victim of pa paralysis. Yes. The man was a sinner of the first degree. Yes. This man was unworthy with unattractive character. His past was so wicked that it required Christ's strict warning. In verse number 15, go and sin no more. That's, right. That's the worst thing will come upon you. 
Be self-supported. Don't depend on others. And then Jesus gave him a warning. He said, go and sin no more. He warned him of the judgment that was greater than his paralysis. Jesus also met an unworthy woman who committed adultery and redeemed her from her life. He asked the woman, woman, where your accuser has no man condemned you? But she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. If you are
nothing that you do that caused God to want to save you. But his grace, God's amazing grace, Hallelujah. And his grace that brought you safe as far. And his grace is what's going to lead us on. We ought to always be grateful for the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. He looked behind your faults and he saw your knees. But I'm even more happy that he looked behind my faults. And so my days. And I'm grateful today. That's why I serve him. That's how I, why I pray to him. That's why I praise him. That's why I worship him. Because there's no man can do for me what Jesus has done for me. When he saved my soul, all hearts are standing. And he invite you to come to Christ this morning. While the blood is yet running warm in your veins, the Lord redeems the unworthy, which we were all unworthy at some point in time. God made us worthy. Not our works, not of the things that we do, but it's because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess with that mouth that the Lord Jesus died for my sins and was raised on the third day morning with all power in his hand. I thank him, God. He says that when I confess that, hallelujah, that we are saved plus nothing. There is nothing that can happen to us. It doesn't hit you in the crown of your head and go all the way to the sole of your feet. But you just believe, you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and do that confession and the Lord says that you're saved plus nothing. You can't get yourself ready to be saved. Hallelujah. But, she, but because of his grace, hallelujah, lest any man should boast, because of his grace, I am saved today. And if I were to die today, I'm going to heaven and rest in his arms. Glory to God. And we want to offer that to you today. Glory to God.
they truly are. I just want to say thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. He has not forgotten about us. He will answer our prayer. So I'm here to tell you, hang on in that day spring. God has got us. He, we thank you for his grace this morning. And we thank you for his mercy. Continue to join on with us every day for intercessory prayer at 6 a.m. and at 6 p.m. on the phone lines. Continue to be with us every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Every Wednesday at 6 p.m. for Bible study. And every Sunday, right here live at Day Spring Missionary, Missionary Baptist Church, where everybody is somebody, and Christ is truly all. And remember.